When it comes to protein powder, I like to make my own as it means I can sprout the nuts and seeds myself, making it a sprouted plant protein powder and I can source the ingredients making sure they're organic and local and this also allows me to know exactly what goes into my protein powder. Plus, the best part is it's so much cheaper to make than buying at the store as I can make up large batches that last me months. I source my ingredients from the source bulk foods to keep the process plastic free and I keep my protein powder in a glass jar so no plastic chemicals leach into the powder. I'll be sharing with you my favourite homemade protein powder that I make on a regular basis using a range of nuts and seeds. For a nut free option you can switch out the almond meal for sunflower seeds and grind them into a fine flour. I find it helps to sprout the nuts and seeds beforehand to reduce anti-nutrient concentrations. Anti-nutrients work to block absorption of other nutrients during digestion and can harm the gut lining over time if consumed in large quantities. If you are concerned about the anti-nutrients found in nuts and seeds, you can soak and sprout them beforehand and then dehydrate them before blending to make this protein powder. Just note, pasteurized almonds will not sprout, so opt for organic, raw almonds and seeds too where possible. Now, unlike store-bought plant protein powders, this homemade powder isn't an isolate so the protein content won't be as concentrated as store-bought varieties. Manufacturers will often extract the starches and fiber from the plant protein used, leaving a higher concentrated protein powder. But unlike the commercial versions, ours has the added benefit of extra fiber and nutrients that would have otherwise been removed. If you do notice any discomfort after consuming this protein powder, stop use immediately. Sprouting, however, should help with this. To make the protein powder, start by grinding up the seeds first to make a flour. I do this individually for each type of seed as it ensures I'm not left with chunks of individual seeds at the end. So, I'll first start with the four tablespoons of chia seeds, blend that up, then add it to a mixing bowl. I'll then add the four tablespoons of hemp seeds, blend, and finally the quarter cup of flax seeds and blend that up to a fine flour. And after each, I'll make sure to add the flour to the bowl after blending. I didn't have hemp seeds with me when I was making this video, so I subbed in some flour seeds instead. Next, I add a pinch of sea salt and a quarter cup of almond meal or blanched almond flour, or you can also use sunflower seed flour to make it nut free to the mixing bowl and mix that through the seed flours until well combined. To give the protein powder some added flavour, you can pour in a quarter cup to half a cup of cacao powder or carob powder for a chocolatey taste. Once the ingredients are all mixed together, I store the powder in an airtight container in a dark, dry place. I usually store it in my pantry and it will keep up to four weeks, or you can store it in the freezer for longer. To use the powder, add two to four tablespoons to smoothies, baked goods, nice cream, a bowl of porridge, or even add it to these no-bake, low-carb protein bars, which I'll link in the description below and in the cards above. When blending into a smoothie, add the liquid first and the protein powder last to prevent the chia seeds from expanding in the liquid and becoming globby. And there you have it, your very own homemade plant protein powder. Let me know if you try this recipe or if you have another favorite protein powder that you make at home. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so, so, so much for watching this video. Take care and I'll see you soon again. Sending you big hugs and lots of love.